uh, whether it was worthwhile making preset packs to get noticed. Throw enough at the wall, something's gonna stick. Very exciting news, it almost feels like you've created a record label just for me. I would like the option to be able to buy in digital format. Now that you've announced that Artificial Roots will be released on 5302, I'm curious as to why the release date is so far off. I could ask you what fits your label, but I'd much rather ask what doesn't fit your label. Hey guys, welcome to the Kane Audio vlog. It is Friday, it's time for another Ask Me Anything. Usual rules apply, comment anything you want below this video and I'll get back to you in next week's video. Before I look at last week's video, is there any house admin? I don't think there's anything major. The 5302 Electronica playlist has been updated, link below this video. Um, yeah, there's two and a half hours of fresh electronica in there uh, which is very much in line with how the 5302 label is heading uh, and on that note uh, thank you very much for everyone that viewed and commented and chipped in with last week's video being episode 100 uh, where I announced uh, 5302 recordings uh, uh, an extra special thanks to everyone that watched it live with me. Uh, a thank you for your patience. I uploaded the video to YouTube as I always do. And I scheduled it for, I think, 3.30 if I remember rightly, which is usually around when I sort of schedule it for, uh, and it usually goes live around then. Uh, last week I decided to premiere it because it was the announcement, and YouTube decided to just take its time uh, processing the video so yeah I embarrassingly had to sort of sit there for nearly an hour going eh, it should be done any minute um, so yeah there we go thank you very much for your patience for for everyone that actually watched it live with me uh, and thank you for your questions I, I, I haven't had a serious look but I seem to recall those questions that you asked during the premiere just disappeared as soon as the premiere ended so uh, I may have missed a couple of questions at the very end. If I did, apologies, comment below this video and I'll answer you in next week's video. Uh, and also, kind of house admin, uh, a little tidbit, uh, YouTube app has stopped notifying me when new comments come through, so apologies for any I may have missed. And that, I think, is it, my friends. So on with the show, let's have a look at last week's video. Uh, starting at the top, Techlight Music, 5302, high five. Uh, very great concept behind the label. I like very much the idea of focusing on electronic music as an art form and also linking it to visual and other arts. Following this and how it goes for sure. Take care and stay safe. Thank you very much, you too. Uh, yeah, I kind of felt like, I mean, I, I'm no good, I think I said in last week's video, I'm no good at visual arts stuff in terms of the ideas and, and getting things done. But I like looking at visual art and I, I know what I like. So I kind of felt like that's where I wanted the label to fill in a gap for me, basically, uh, because I wanted it to be something I'm passionate about that isn't, you know, it's not everything done by me. So it's something I can appreciate, basically. Uh, so there we go. Not your human. A uh, new label is going to be amazing and I hope it becomes a success. Have a great weekend, Dom. Thank you very much. And you. Uh, Ricky John. Crazy. Since I missed the mark, uh, since being off work, the days are all blending together. Uh, to clarify from last week, I meant being noticed by people in the industry slash business. Uh, but that seems equally unlikely. I do, however, get lots of adverts from companies who exclusively seem to deal in selling presets for various soft slash hard synths. Right, so this was talking about uh, whether it was worthwhile making preset packs to get noticed, I think, was basically the question. Uh, so you meant being noticed by industry slash business? Uh, that seems equally unlikely. 
I mean, kind of. I mean, I suppose if you did a, a preset pack for a synth company and then pitched it to that synth company, then uh, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I guess, you know, you could potentially form some sort of a relationship there. So I'm not saying, I'm not saying you couldn't get noticed, but, um, I, I don't know how helpful or how useful it would be in the long term. I don't know. Um, but certainly worth a shot. Uh, yeah, you, you do say about these, you know, adverts from companies who exclusively seem to deal in selling presets for various soft slash hard sense. So again, they, unfortunately, the preset world, much like the loops world, much like the whole music industry, let's be honest, there's a lot of people that work in this industry that, that uh, run on the premise of throw enough shit at the wall, something's going to stick, um, which to me is not the right way of doing it. But I guess it works equally well for certain people. So uh, the problem is, is if, for example, uh, and I'm not naming names because I'm not I'm not talking about anyone specific here, but let's talk about an imaginary company that you mentioned that sells nothing but preset packs for soft and hard synths. Um, if you as a sound designer made a preset pack for them they might sell what 20 copies 50 copies 100 copies and you might get a couple hundred dollars um but they're only selling 20 40 50 100 packs because they have so many on offer and they're making a fortune from that because every single pack they're releasing is making twenty, fifty, hundred dollars or whatever. So the artist is really only making twenty, fifty, a hundred dollars. And let's be honest, you know, making a, a preset pack of a hundred presets or whatever uh, can take weeks of work and hard graft and careful thought and planning. And for me personally. I don't think I would want to work full time for several weeks on end for just a hundred dollars. It's not it's not in my interest. But for the company buying and selling that product, um well they've got a thousand of them. So they're making, you know, a hundred thousand dollars each month or whatever. So uh yeah, it's a different story for them. So they can make vast sums of money because they're just they're just doing the catch-all net and just spraying shit everywhere um in the hope that a few people buy it here and there but the actual artists who put in the hard work for those packs don't really get any distinct benefit from it um so yeah it's an unfortunate situation and and it's one that's mirrored in all over the place. I mean, look at look at the number of record labels out there that are releasing, you know, new releases week in, week out. You know, there are there are labels I've seen that release four or five releases a week. Well, you can't possibly be making the artists any significant money from that. It just it just can't be happening because, you know, you're just basically spraying shit out there and hoping something sticks and. Uh, it's just it's just not a business model I've ever wanted to be a part of, basically. Um, so I think, kind of tying it back into your question and trying not to go on a big rant, I think what I'm trying to say is, is be careful of those companies. Be careful of, if you were to make a preset pack or whatever, then be careful of who you sign it off to. Um, because as you say about these companies and I have noticed you've, you've quoted companies, um, which I think is you're right to do that. Um, yeah, I, I think, you know, signing off to these people, unfortunately pays them dividends, not you. So just be very careful. And, and, uh, and that's advice to anyone who's signing music to record labels or whatever, 
you know, if a record label is just getting your music onto Beatport and not doing much else, then what's it doing for you? You know, you could do that yourself. You could get your own music onto Beatport. That's not that's not an issue. You know, go to CD ba CD Baby or whatever some crappy aggregator and and do it through them. Um, but yeah, they need to be getting you a benefit, and much like if you were to sign over, whether it be music or a preset pack. So it's kind of similar, I guess. Um, yeah, there we go. Uh, enjoyed your response anyway. Made me think, as always, and your rant on 5G. <laughs> Thank you very much. A few people seem to have liked my rant on 5G. Uh, I can't remember what I said, but <laughs> it's good to know. Uh, also, I need to note that the 5302 playlist on your Spotify is gold. Thank you very much. Um, as I've just said, the, the playlist has now been refreshed with another two hours of music. Um, by the way, I've kept an archive of everything that's ever gone on to these playlists and that's like 20 hours long or something. And I'm kind of thinking maybe I should do like a public archive of these things so that people can just stick that on shuffle. Um, yeah, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Uh, also, I need to note, no, you've said that bit, uh, edit, 5302, high five, congratulations on your 100th AMA and the launch of the label, very excited to see where it all goes, have a great weekend, and you, thank you very much. Uh, Raphael, uh, amazing news and congrats on number 100 AMA, or would it be thank you for number 100 episodes of Ask Me Anything, either or and both. Uh, Bill Carroll, it's cool to see the start of 5302, can't wait to see it grow. High five. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, it's going to be an interesting journey, I think. Um, for those of you who've followed me for a long time, will know that I did run uh, a small record label 20 years ago now. Yikes. Was it that long ago? Yeah. Yeah, because it ended almost 10 years ago. And I learned a lot of lessons and the music industry changed radically during that time this was the the you know we started the record label making vinyl and mp3s were a bit of a thing on the side and we ended the label by doing no vinyl or cd or anything and it was only mp3s um so there was a huge change in that period and i think i learned a lot of lessons in hindsight so i'm hoping to sort of carry those lessons with me on this journey um and yeah, hopefully it'll be a, a, a different uh, a different result. Who knows? Daily Patcher, happy 100th vlog. Congrats on the new label. Uh, this will be one I am following very closely. Uh, I'm also very much enjoying the Late Night Electronica EP. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, I'm quite proud of that one. Uh, I don't know if there is interest for it, but if there are enough Apple Music users here, I don't mind creating a playlist on Apple Music that mirrors the 5302 Spotify playlist for those of us using that service. It's a pain in the ass to share playlists, but it is actually possible by following a profile first and then adding the user's playlist to your library. Uh, like iTunes and you've put slash daily patcher for example uh, if you're willing to do that then that's cool uh, I'm I'm okay with that if people out there are using Apple music um, I guess yeah it's uh, it's one of those things I did look at and you know the whole public playlist thing is just a bit of a nightmare when it comes to Apple music if it was as easy as Spotify then I would do it myself um, but unfortunately, it's just not that easy. And also, there aren't that many Apple Music users compared to Spotify. And also, to use Apple Music, you need to be a paid subscriber of Apple Music. Whereas Spotify, you can be a free user and still access playlists. You just have adverts or whatever every now and then. So I kind of figured that Spotify is just... It's it's the one at the minute anyway. So, um, yeah, if anyone wants, then feel free to chime in on Daily Patch Up. Uh, next is Yarosov Akilosovsky. Uh, looking forward to uh, looking forward for what 5302 is going to deliver. High five. Thank you very much. Uh, me too. I've got a few things lined up and a few tracks that I'm signing and i'm very very excited about that um 
Uh, I was explaining to someone yesterday that it's so refreshing being able to uh, be so involved in a label that I'm genuinely passionate about all of the music and it's, it's genuinely stuff that I love. So um, it's an easy sell for me. Uh, Cavake, well, that's one hell of a way to celebrate AMA 100. 5302, high five. Uh, very exciting news. It almost feels like you've created a record label just for me. I've been listening to the updated Spotify playlist. I have quite diverse tastes in music, but 5302 Electronica is the kind of music that really grabs me. Uh, I love the tie in with visual art and I love the design of 5302.co.uk. Uh, awesome to see that Ash and Jakku are on board. I'm also chuffed that Deadly Custard is involved. Uh, I love his music, so I'm looking forward to hearing what he releases on 5302. Yes, you can expect something a little bit different from him, uh, and I can tell you it is worth the wait. Uh, and his design work too, 100%. Uh, his avatar profile pic is one of my favourites. I couldn't even tell you what his avatar is but good to know uh, anyway i'm very much looking forward to seeing how the label evolves i've signed up to the mailing list and liked slash followed everything thank you very much uh, by the way anyone else watching this uh, i will drop a link below this video it'll be uh, link tree slash 5302 if you go there um you'll find all the 5302 links from the spotify playlist to the website to all their social pages uh Although the social pages, they exist, they're not very active right now because I figured, well, the first release isn't until September, so I didn't want to be uh, flooding people with just useless crap. Um, but it will slowly pick up towards them. Uh, and also, uh, there are some small surprises and little eggs dropped along the way between now and September, so please do follow and get involved because... That's going to be the only way you're going to get these eggs. Uh, on the subject of formats, I would like the option to be able to buy in digital format. I listen to streaming services, but I also listen offline to music. I've saved to our media server and on my SD card. I buy a shitload of stuff from Bandcamp. I think you might be right about vinyl, though. A few years ago, I would have definitely bought on vinyl to add to a collection I'd built since the 90s. But when I sold the lot, when we moved overseas, and I'm now reluctant to buy music on a physical media, as it's all going to eventually end up adding to our ever-growing mountains of plastic waste. Uh, sorry if that sounds preachy. It's not intended to be just my own personal guilt. I'm with you, 100%. Um, I spent... 20 something years building a huge cd collection and vinyl collection only for it to end up just getting palmed off basically um uh yeah i still have a few treasured vinyl uh, and i have literally a few treasured cds and, and that's about it so um kind of I, I with my album i want to put out a physical form on cd not i don't think it's because it i expect it to be used as a cd um i think it's more because it'll be a limited run and i think it's something to keep and for me it's a, a, a momentous part of my life uh having um a full artist album on a new label so um for me it's a big deal so i think i'm gonna do that anyway um but yeah i do generally agree um as for buying mp3s it's good to know that people do still do that uh because i think you're one of the few that do that uh, i'll be honest i don't buy that many these days on mp3 um apart from when i'm maybe doing dj sets or if i need a file for referencing or whatever um, other than that, I tend to use well Spotify and stuff like that. Um, yeah, so I'm with you. I'm with you on that. Uh, five, as far as five three hundred two goes, uh, I well there isn't a band camp. Maybe I'll set one up. I don't know. Um, I, as much as I like band camp, the the company and the process and all of that, uh, I kind of don't like the website and the way it looks. Uh, <laughs> and I know that's that's completely the wrong way of looking at it but that's just where i'm at 
so I don't know. We'll see. Uh, about busking and solo electronic artists, Rachel K. Collier's live looping. I believe she's a Cardiff girl. Uh, live looping performances are impressive. Her music might not be your thing, but she's undeniably good at what she does. 100%. She is very, very good. Uh, and like I say, a local lass from where I'm from. Um, yeah, but she's vocalist, isn't she? So again, I think with the busking thing, because it so for anyone that didn't watch my rant on last week's uh electronic music busking um i kind of said that you know um much like if you're a, a, a laptop dj and you go to a nightclub they nobody knows what you're doing on that laptop you could be on your facebook for all they know you could be checking your emails um you know it's kind of tricky for an outsider to know what's going on um and so I sort of said that maybe that's one reason there's not so many electronic buskers out there is because, you know, if they're sat twiddling knobs and whatever, no one, you know, to the average Joe Bloggs walking past down the street, they're not going to know what you're doing, what that button does or whatever. You know, if you're going wild on the filter cutoff, they don't know what, what you're doing really. Um, so it's kind of tricky. Whereas with Rachel's stuff, she's singing as well, as far as I'm aware. So... Uh, you know, we, we can hear a, a voice. We know what singing is. So I think, again, if you're singing as an electronic busker, then you're already a step ahead. And uh, let's be honest, if you're singing in a, any kind of electronic music, you're already 10 steps ahead of 90% of other electronic musicians. Um, so, yeah, there we go. Uh, question. Now that you've announced that Artificial Roots will be released on 5302, I'm curious as to why the release date is so far off. I'd assume you've got a project plan that tells you uh, the album won't be ready to release until September. So I'm just curious uh, what's still left to do now that the music itself is good as finished. That's a damn good question. Um, so there are a multitude of reasons. First and foremost, I was always told never sell an album in the summer. Nobody buys albums in the summer. Uh, I don't know how true that is. It's just something I've always, it, it's kind of one of those unwritten things in the music industry. If you look at albums and album sales, uh, the big albums tend to come out, you know, nearer to Christmas, I suppose, because it used to be Christmas presents. And uh, But even still, after Christmas and in the winter, I think people just have more time to sort of sit down and listen to music and whatever. Whereas in the summer, they may be out partying. So you get the summer hits and their singles, um, but you don't tend to get the summer hit albums, if that makes sense. So, so that's one main reason. Secondly, uh, coronavirus has hit the world and... Uh, from what I've been hearing and seeing, it seems that streaming numbers have actually dipped a bit during the pandemic so far. So I thought that people would be streaming more and I was kind of toying with the idea of, oh, do I just release it early? Um, so that's another reason is coronavirus has definitely had an impact. Uh, while people are quarantined, I <laughs> I guess, you know, uh, some people will be streaming more, but I think, and again, I could be wrong here, but the biggest um, demographic of, of people that stream music are commuters on their way to work. Uh, so, you know, no one's on their way to work at the minute. So uh, I think the, the number of streaming levels have dropped significantly. Um, so that's one other reason. Uh, also, uh, like I've just touched upon, I, I kind of want the CD to come out in a physical format of some sort. I'm looking at CD as my, my primary objective, but there are others. I've seen some cool USB stuff, um, that I quite like the look of. Again, it's more like a memento rather than a physical format. I'm kind of hesitant to, you know, it's not being released on CD. It's more like there's a, a CD as though it was merch, I guess, uh, is what I'm looking at. But um, those things take a long time. It's also taken me an incredibly long time to find a supplier that can give me a glass master. B 
because when you're pressing CDs, um, you know, a CDR that we all know and use at home on our computers and whatever is basically the, the way it's the way the music is pressed into it is, is basically cut with a laser. So you have a you know you you know how a CDR works. It's a it's a laser cutter inside your uh, your uh, CD recorder, um, and it's a very very uh, thin foil on the back of the CD, and it's you're basically cutting notches using a laser. You're cutting notches into that thin foil. That's the real basic layman's terms. Um, however, with a shop bought CD, they're pressed from a glass master. Um, and there's uh, there's huge differences all around. First and foremost, the, the quality of everything is just worlds apart. Um, a CDR, give it five, ten years and the foil will start peeling off the back um, and it just becomes trash. Uh, whereas a Glassmaster pressed CD will last, I don't even know, as long as plastic lasts, hundreds of years, I suppose. Um, so yeah, so there are huge differences and I kind of figured, well, if I'm pressing something onto CD, then I want it to be of absolute quality and, and I'm really doing it for myself more than anything else. So I want it to last. Um, so yeah, so there's things like that. They were huge factors as well. And I wanted to be able to have the time to research these things properly. Uh, also get the funding because, uh, again, I don't know how many of you have pressed CDs before, but even just pressing one CD, uh, the glass master is the expensive bit. It's not it's not the number of CDs. So, yeah, you could get a hundred or a thousand CDRs pressed. No problem. You know, um, they're ten a penny. But when it comes to a glass master pressed CD, uh, making that glass master is a huge cost um, to get everything absolutely top quality so uh, it's something that I needed to research I, I knew it wasn't going to happen straight away it wasn't going to be overnight it's not it's not like when you get a, a bunch of CDs done on in CDR you just google thousand CDs and get impressed job done uh, it's not like that with the glass master so yeah so that was a huge factor uh, what else was there also possibly one of the biggest factors really is the fact that I wanted to put my money where my mouth is with my album in terms of launching 5302. So I needed all the 5302 socials, the artwork, the website and everything ready before I could properly announce it, which was last week. And then I need to start a slow campaign of building things up. I'd like to build more followers. And as I said last week, you know, I'll be totally honest, uh, this time last week, all of the 5302 socials had zero followers well if I released an album to zero followers that's not great you know um, and I'm not expecting it to have huge numbers by September but at least I've got a bit more time to sort of run up to that um, and then there are also loads and loads and loads of things that I won't bore you with, but on the admin side of things like uh, getting all the contracts ready, all the legal stuff ready, registering uh, publishing company, a recording company, uh, sorting all the processes. I've had uh, consultations with people about uh, deals that may or may not happen in the background uh, so things like tv film syncs is something where i want to be aiming the label so i need people working on pushing things there and these things don't happen overnight and and even once my album comes out there's still a long 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 journey to go with all of that so um you know again nothing is going to happen overnight um yeah so and there's still a lot more to sort out so uh i'd kind of given I'd, I'd done a lot of research already and, and this is why setting up the label has taken me at least 18 months to get this far uh, because I've done huge amounts of research on what kinds of strategies work, what kinds of processes work. Again, I'd, I'm not going to go into too much detail, partly because I don't want to be giving away all of my business strategy, um, but mostly because it might bore the hell out of you. But um. Yeah, so there are marketing strategies and things that I've put into place and I want every release to 
uh, follow that pattern or uh, assuming it works successfully uh, so there's a huge amount to consider in there um, so yeah so I, I yeah I, I kind of I didn't want the album to come out in September but realistically I was sort of looking at all the dates available and thinking about or when is this coronavirus going to be over? When can I realistically get things like CDs pressed? And I want to give them an early release. And not only that, I've let on to the fact that I'm going to be dropping a few little Easter eggs along the way. Uh, so, you know, there's things like pre-save times and all of that and what they call instant gratification releases and stuff. So th th there's a lot of stuff that will happen and trickle out over time. So uh, there will be things happening between now and September. But September is the official big day. Uh, and I'm just going to reset the camera because I can see it's going to do it itself in three, two, one. Uh, so, yeah, there we go. There's a massive long rant on why Artificial Roots won't be out until September. Um, yeah, so the music is done. And, and weirdly enough, I've only just submitted the final masters uh, the other day. Uh, because, again, I wanted to sit on them for as long as I possibly can uh, because I wanted to make sure that everything is absolutely spot on. Uh, so, yeah, so there's there's a lot to consider with all of these things. Uh, moving on. Uh, oh, actually, yeah, moving on. Uh, jelly, success each day should be judged by the seeds sown, not the harvest reaped. Whilst I agree... I'm not sure why you're commenting that, um, but either way, I like it. Uh, Silent Warrior. Hello, Dom. Uh, I see that demos are welcome on your label. I find it good. And that's exactly what I have a question about. If you look at or listen to the portfolio of some labels, it is very difficult to see why this or that artist was signed. One and the same artist has different tracks where you don't hear any connection. That always bothered me about albums. Two songs were liked, the rest were not listened to because they were so different. And sometimes labels seem like albums, not because the tracks are bad, they are so different. On the other hand, there is a letter like, unfortunately, your track doesn't fit our label. So a label has different tracks slash artists that have no real connection, but still the label does have a style. It's a bit confusing. I could ask you what fits your label, but I'd much rather ask what doesn't fit your label, even if the music would fit your label stylistically. I know a difficult question. Best wishes to you and your label from me. <sighs> OK, so there's a lot to get my head around here. <laughs> Right then, where was I? Okay, so, uh, talking about, if you look at or listen to the portfolio of some labels, it's very difficult to see why this or that artist was signed. One of the same artists has different tracks where you don't hear any connection. So, I guess you're saying that some labels sign artists that don't sound anything like each other, I guess, is what you're saying. Which, I guess, is true. Uh, that always bothered me about albums. Two songs were liked, the rest were not listened to because they were so different. Uh, okay. And sometimes labels seem like albums, not because the tracks are bad. They are just so different. On the other hand, there is a letter like, Unfortunately, your track doesn't fit our label. Yeah, so I, I, I think I kind of get what you're saying. It, it's tricky to to nail it down. I mean, I think a, a great example is Mousetrap. Um, they have always kind of had a sound, at least until recently. Um, or maybe they still do more recently, but I think that, that sound has changed over the last year and a half. Um but I would say up until last year, Mousetrap was really known for a sound, a vibe. And, and that that wasn't specific to a genre. It could have been dubstep, could have been techno, could have been progressive, could have been uh, anything really. And 
but but there was definitely a distinctive vibe about it um and uh, you know so uh, again those artists they don't really have there's no real connection you know you can't compare the work of no manner to the work of atlas they're two just wildly different artists in different music and different vibe everything is just the opposite basically because no manner goes for that you know 8-bit techno club banger uh you know nail on the head stuff whereas atlas goes for the more complicated musicality laid back electronica uh, you know, visually they're both radically different. One would go the 8-bit, the other would go maybe analog. Um, and yet they both reach that, that mousetrap sound. So I think it's kind of a difficult thing to answer. Um, so in terms of you say, I could ask you what fits your label, but I'd much rather ask what doesn't fit your label, even if the music would fit your label stylistically. I guess I honestly don't know I think it's probably harder to say what wouldn't fit the label at this point because it's so early um, and I think it's hard to pinpoint what I am looking for even really and I, and I guess that's kind of the point is I want something that kind of stands out and something that's just a bit different to everything else out there and I, and I don't mean experimental I don't want it to be it's not an experimental label I want there to be beautiful melodies and rich sounds um, I want the music to serve a purpose I want there to be some emotion in there so and I think with electronica I think most people will agree with me here as well especially ambient electronica there's a very fine line sometimes where you start to go is this elevator music do you know what i mean I, like sometimes with or often with ambient electronica it gets very very close to being elevator music and that's not a direction i want 5302 to go um so there needs to be some meaning behind it and there needs to be a clear passion in there and i think that is entirely the point so so okay i'll tell you what i'm not looking for and i'll tell you what i don't want for the label even though it might fit stylistically here we go yeah i think i've finally just answered it in my head what i don't want is for somebody to try and make a piece of music for 5302 what i don't want is for somebody to attempt to make something that isn't their natural sound. I think that's the point I'm trying to make, is that you, as an artist, should never force yourself to do something that isn't something you're naturally passionate about. Of course, you should force yourself to try new things. Of course, you should force yourself to try new techniques and new sounds and explore things. But you need to enjoy each of those journeys, steps, progresses, whatever, those learning moments. You need to enjoy them because that shows in your music, I think. Um I wouldn't want somebody to just haphazardly grab a piano and go, oh, these chords work, they're tried and tested, I'll throw them down with a couple of ambient beats and, uh, you know, or a really soft 4-4 four, four, and there we go, job done. You know, because it shows, it shows in the music. You can tell that there are, there are tracks in the 5302 playlist, for example, um, like some of the Chiasmos tracks that really just a piano and a kick drum but you can tell that the artist behind them so oliver arnold's for example you can tell he's feeling those chords you can you can hear the passion in those chords 
Um, everything is done so meticulously that the passion comes through. Um, so I guess, yeah, that's what fits the label. And in terms of what doesn't fit the label is I, I don't want generic music. I don't want, oh, that's ambient. That'll do for 5302. I don't want, you know, I, I, I don't want um, music that just fills a gap for the sake of filling a gap. I want it to fill a gap because there's a need for that gap to be filled. Uh, I hope that makes sense. Uh, you've said, I know it's a difficult question and you're right. It is a difficult question. Uh, best wishes to you and your label from me. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, so hopefully that's kind of answered your question. I think it... it if you ask me this question again in a year's time or five years time, I wonder if my answer would be different. It's kind of hard to tell at this point because, I mean, so far, officially, officially, there's only one signed release to the uh, to the label, uh, and that's my album. And of course, I like my album. I'm my best critic, you know, Um <laughs> You know, I'd give it five out of five. So, you know, everyone should buy it. Um, but looking further afield and obviously, you know, as I've led on, I've got Deadly Custard, Jacko and Ash, uh, who are incredibly uh, brilliant musicians and producers. And uh, I think will go a very long way. I hope will go a very long way. Um Yeah, and I think they tie in with everything that that, that this is going in, but uh, it's hard to say what it is I'm looking for specifically, even in terms of the music they've sent me and the music we've agreed on. It's very difficult to pigeonhole it and put it down to just one thing or one sound, but I think there is, I think the biggest thing is, is the one thing that you can't, describe scientifically and that's the the passion the creative passion that comes through in everything from sound design to to the musicality the choice of chords and notes and arrangement everything must it's got to stir something in your soul i guess uh and yeah i don't think i could be any more specific than that at this point but ask me again in a year or five years and who knows if the answer will be different hopefully i'll have thought of a better way of describing it by then uh we'll see anyway that my friends is the end of this week's ama i think we're pretty much getting back to normal ask me anything questions so as usual ask me anything anything you want whether it be about equipment whether it be about production about sound design about arrangement about loops packs preset packs coffee whatever you want um yeah and to, to prove you've made it this far into the video comment the word oasis and i'll give you a high five in next week's video because youtube is recommending oasis live at main road 1996 a classic uh, a vintage uh so there we go that's it for this week i will see you same time next week i hope you all are staying safe and sane at this point we're in week i don't even know of quarantine is it 10 or 100 i have no idea we've i think we've all lost track of time now um so just keep doing what you're doing stay sensible and i'll see you next week cheers